JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Darius Lanchowskis. Today is the 8th of March 2022. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Tuesday's morning session, recorded session of course for now, for this week. Um, but as always, before we go in further, uh, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So yep, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation it should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, as always, a uh, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which is also updated on a daily basis. So yep, check us out here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So now then, uh, jumping into the charts, but um, yeah, I'll pick up on the stock heat map in a bit. But first, yes, Nikkei 225, guys, uh, continues to slide. Everything is according to the plan. What I said to you uh, previously that if we also drop below this 25,425 zone, then yes, uh, we could go further. I mean, initially that was my target, but as, as I said before, then if we do fall and stay below it, then, well, we could continue sliding further. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and also, if we do stay, continue to trade below this area, below that 25,425 zone, yes, uh, my next uh, potential target is the 23,725 level here, uh, marked by the high of the 9th of October, uh, also marked near the high of the 20th of October. So, yep, everything kind of, like I said, uh, looks quite good bearish for now. Um, again, um, if we take a look at the um, at the kind of how much we have corrected already since let's say since um, since the end of March here of 2020 when the you know when the pandemic hit. So yep. Um, it seems like, yeah, we're now, I mean, we've now corrected at least 38.2% uh, on the Fibonacci. So let me just put this one on the chart. There we go. Um, and it seems that, yes, we are heading towards that 50%. And that 50% is roughly around that level that I talked about, this 23,725 23, zone. And uh, yeah, let's see how this is going to play out, guys. Um, for now, um, we are, like I said, we are are drifting uh, further uh, south. It may be the case that it, yeah, it could continue doing that, but I would, uh, or maybe we could see a bit, maybe a bit of a corrective move here. However, with the with the correction to the upside, well, to be honest, I would rather wait for a break of this downside line here and then maybe a push above the 26,000 mark somewhere around there and then we would take it from there. Uh, Shanghai Composite, guys, so yes, uh, continues to slide. Uh, we fell um, we kind of fell below this, um, or I would say we're still falling below this area right now, this highlighted territory. I spoke about this yesterday, if you remember, and I said that if we um, if we eventually stay below this highlighted zone, well, this is where it could turn out to be a little bit on the ugly side here for this index. Of course, we uh, the, the time that I'm recording this video, the uh, the index is still running, uh, it's still not closed. Uh, so yeah, let's see where it's going to end. If it's going to stay somewhere around here, 
here, guys. I will be very careful and cautious. Maybe this, you know, could be seen maybe something of a false breakout. However, if it does stay below that 3,312, 13 zone right here, well, I mean, uh, which is, by the way, the lowest point of July of 2021. And then, yes, if it stays below, then, yeah, we'll go for, uh, for lower levels. For the upside, um, for the upside here, I would need to see maybe this one pushing back um pushing back above the uh, 3,356 territory, somewhere around here. And then, yeah, maybe we could consider a bit of a, a larger correction here to the upside. So again, at the moment with the upside, it's a little bit tricky. Um, but again, we might squeeze something if we do see a push back to the upside here above this uh, 3,356 territory right there. Um, so now then, um, Let's jump into the German index, DAX, and uh, yep, um, here we have a we had a good reversal here to the upside. However, that was not enough to kind of bring the index back into positive territory. However, it was a good start. Um, yep, it did push in, uh, further. Uh, oh, sorry, it did push higher at one point. Um, but again, looking at this, I mean, this is not looking good here for now. I mean, for the German market. And yes, we are sliding heavily. Um, looking at this, I mean, last time we were, let's say, you know, drifting that much to downside was, I think back, yeah, back in, in the, during the pandemic. So when the pandemic started, so in the, in the end of uh, February and the beginning of March. So we're kind of having something similar like that again. So if we, <clears throat> excuse me, um, if we kind of compare these, you know, these two events, it seems that, yes, this is what the market needed. And uh, well, uh, everything, it seems like, it seems like everything is kind of, um, you know, comes at its time uh, when it when it's needed. So we were we were due for a good correction. So there we go. Uh, you know, we got that correction. Um, and uh, well, I mean, let's see where it's gonna go. I mean, this is not let's say the end of the uh, the world here for this index uh, because again we were let's say declining like that previously. Um, can we get that rebound right now? I mean, let's see how it's gonna play out of course um, if we draw a Fibonacci on this one as well so for example from the beginning of the pandemic um, you know and in uh, the looking at these um, looking at you know from looking at these all highs here that we you know with the, the double top here that I've you know picked up previously you can see that we kind of have already reached that 50% almost I would say almost just we need a few more steps here um, so currently the index is trading at around 15,519 the cash index so that means yeah so we're back below this hurdle right there these this 15,500 91. Um, that means that we are com coming very close to that 50% retracement on the Fibonacci. And well, I'm going to keep an eye on that one. Uh, this 12,370 zone that I've marked previously. Yes, I'm going to keep an eye on it. However, I'm going to uh, pick up a level here. Let me recycle this level, this area right here. This area right here near the 12,313 zone um, kind of very almost matches this 50% uh, retracement on the Fibonacci. So basically everything's kind of looking quite interesting here. So I would say yes, further declines could be possible here. Uh, we could see more of this, um, you know, um, more of the selling here. But keep your eyes on that area, this area right here. If it provides good support, maybe a bit of a rebound here could be possible. But for now, yes, we're all you know aiming lower. Uh, we're all aiming here to the downside. But as I said, uh, this. Um, correction here and you know um, and in general um, if you start looking is if you, if you if you just kind of switch off um, you know the political side of the of the world and kind of you know to only focus on the economic side then in general you will see that the uh, certain events kind of come in um, at certain times and seems that the market was crying for a you know for a good correction um, and uh, yes we got that so in general I think that um, 
let me have a look here very quickly what's the um, where's that uh, where's that line um, okay I always miss it where is that uh, there we go price range so if we grab it from the top here and uh, well not from the top actually but uh, where's that top where's that top there we go let me just grab this one right here so if we draw it from here, I mean, you can see from these two t two peaks, um, you'll see that we have already done that 20, you know, 20 odd, uh, 20 something for uh, correction. And the 50% is roughly at a, you know, 25% correction here on the German index. So basically everything's kind of Perf working out perfectly. Um, last time here, when we were during this pandemic, we also had okay. We had here a little bit more. So if we do apply, we had around 40% correction. Okay. So now let's see if we can, you know, go further. If the if the 61.8% retracement on the Fibonacci is uh, somewhere around here, somewhere around 30%, that's even better, probably a much, much better number to look at. Um, however, this is all, of course, this is all speculation, and this is a little bit of uh, me, you know, trying to get ahead of myself here. Um, but again, like I said, everything's really, like I said, really kind of, you know, working um, kind of working according to the plan I would say because we're according to the technical analysis um, and uh, yeah all like I said all the events kind of are coming at certain times when you know when the market is in need of a good correction or something like that so but yeah let's uh, let's see how this is gonna play out for now I'm aiming for that 50% uh, retracement on the Fibonacci I mean uh, let's see if we can bounce from here this would be around 25% of a correct corrective move here from the peak recent peak um, so yeah let's see if investors <clears throat> start going shopping here or will they wait for a little bit more um, the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average so uh, also drifted lower and uh, I've talked about this one previously a while ago I talked about this one and I said that um, look I mean we we had a good of a kind of a, a move back up here above this hurdle uh, move back I said that wait for a maybe a test of this upside line from underneath and we did that we got that correction mm, we got that test and there we go look at this I mean this worked out perfectly this started selling off again so I would say mission accomplished on this one because initially my target was that 33,150 zone so yeah um, at the moment <clears throat> excuse me at the moment I will uh, be very careful yes we stayed below that 33,000 1150 zones so that means that yes further declines are possible currently we can see that the cash is cash index is trading at around 32,445 zone um, so that's way below yesterday's close um, but yeah I mean the idea was that if it stays below this hurdle then yeah further declines could be possible well this is what we're getting right now and my next target is the area near that 32 psychological 32,000 mark again um, looking at this picture um, let's see if we can you know we can reach that level but to be honest uh, to do another 400 points down for the Dow Jones it's not really an issue so uh, it's not a problem so everything's kind of working out nicely here as well according to the kind of you know um, according to the nice rules here of technical analysis um, Another thing, another thing. Now, do you see, as you can see here, the US market has not sold off as significantly, let's say, as the European ones. Um, however, I think that the majority of things here are connected towards the, not well, I don't think, but I think, uh, I know that there's a lot of things are connected to the Fed, of course, that's logical. Um, so maybe um, the kind of the market, the US market is waiting for uh, Fed's meeting, you know, and to see how much, uh, uh, what will be the rate hike for by how many basis points so yeah uh, of course there are like you can you can check you know the um, there are forecasts already um, you can check that yourself but um, again uh, looking at this picture I mean 
Um, of course, we know that if the if the Fed, I mean, if the Fed increases, then this won't be very well, very good for the uh, for the stock market. And uh, yeah, now we're seeing a good move lower. Um, we are currently already already below that 23.6 percent retracement here on the Fibonacci. My next target, if you know, following the same logic as with DAX, is the 30 um, the 30 8.2 percent and look at this i mean how well it coincides with these two levels let me just uh, put this one quickly on the chart so this is what i'm talking about right here um sorry not this one would uh, let me just um, capture this one there we go 29,881 roughly around there that's where uh, the 38.2 percent retracement on the fibonacci is so we are already trading below the 23.6 i mean can we overcome this 32,000 mark? I believe there is a good possibility for doing that. And uh, yeah, we could see this one sliding further south. But I think that the, like I said, the US indices are waiting for for the Fed. Now, in terms of yesterday's performance, I mean, you can see that there's a lot of redness here in the um, in the market in the U.S. Uh, stocks here. Um, of course, the most best performing uh, the best performing uh, sectors yesterday were um, energy. That's obvious. I mean, look ex looking at the oil market. I mean, that is just insane. I will pick up on that. Mm, and of course, utilities were also seeing and on the positive kind of territory and uh, you can see them right here so companies like nextera um, yeah you can check those out if you're if you do like to trade stocks guys uh, but again um, let's see how all this this thing with uh, you know with the, the current conflict goes ahead um, at the moment we are very careful here with everything so yeah um, and to be honest like I said as with my analysis here that I've mentioned about, you know, potential further declines. Um, yeah, be very careful. I mean, technology was hit, um, to, that was hit hard and uh, consumer cyclicals were also seen on the, you know, on the, on in the, in the red. Um, so yeah, they're not, they're not performing quite well. Um, so, um, now, DXY very quickly on the dollar index, of course, that one in Cosmos here, I mean, it just flies further north. Um, it is just pushing nicely back up. So again, I said to you that uh, yesterday that I'm aiming for that 100 level. Well, I'm still, I, I, I still am. So um, for now, I'm aiming for, yeah, like I said, this 99.97 or roughly we can round it up to 100 levels so yeah let's see if we can uh reach that uh today or maybe or at least this week um uh this is a good possibility that we could do that so yeah let's see how all this is going to play out gold um although yeah dollar this there's this uh, battle right now of the you know who's a better uh safe haven and uh well at the moment uh, it seems like uh, uh, gold is kind of I think that may be in the same position as DXY so the, the, although the dollar index is you know rushing uh, further north here I mean uh, gold is just continuing to travel higher as well of course getting picked up with all the you know uh, fear in the market right now um, as I said before to you yesterday I um, what I'm aiming here for I mean uh, is this 2015 mark uh, which is the uh, marked by the inside swing low the 7th of August and the uh, high of the 18th of August so yeah um, this is my target this is where we are already uh, we're already there almost I mean we just have maybe around uh, six or seven uh, dollars left of uh, you know from reaching it so yeah let's uh, let's see how this is gonna play out if we can get a bit of a hold up here if not my next target is the 20 uh, sorry 2075 little mark by the uh, all-time high here which we've reached in um, in two in 2020 guys um, WTI oil. Okay. So of course, obviously continues to, you know, rally here. And, uh, yeah, um, at the moment, I mean, this looking at this picture and for this, I mean, for oil, I need to jump into a monthly chart just to have a better, you know, vision was a you know, better view of what's happening. I would say like this, um, this is going to be a very interesting month. 
is going to be a very interesting month. Yes, I mean, uh, let's see if we can stay above this 114 or 15 level approximately around there. If we can stay, then yes, uh, my next target is this 147 mark, which we reached in back in 2008, guys. Um, if we don't stay above this hurdle, then, uh, then well, we'll get a nice false breakout here and then maybe a nice correction back down. At the moment, I'm very careful. It's like just like I said, the beginning of the month. I know it's still a lot to wait here. I mean, a lot of things can happen, but like I said, for now, if you're, you know, if you're looking for that short in oil, um, I, I would say stay away from it for now because again, it's uh, it's a little bit tricky unless you're unless you're scalping maybe, but then, you know, have your stop loss in place just to be a little bit on the safe side. And in general, with the shorts right now, I mean, it's just um, predict everything's unpredictable. Everything's really headline driven. So. You know, not a lot of technical uh, analysis is sitting right now in oil. So that's why um, I would say for now, be very careful, be very cautious. And uh, yes, um, keep your eyes on, like I said, on the monthly chart. Ethereum very quickly on that one. Uh, so drifting a little bit to the downside, however, not significantly. And to be honest, let me just adjust this chart, remove all the drawings because... Mm, for now, I mean, in terms of trend lines, no longer anything is valid here, apart from maybe some short-term ones. What I'm keeping an eye on, of course, is the mm, the lowest point of January here, uh, or in other words, the lowest point of this year, um, which is roughly around that 2,160. For that, I uh, would need to see maybe a uh, maybe a drop below this hurdle. This some for some reason this 2,000 2,478 zone is providing good support. Um, looking at the um, yeah looking at this hurdle here um, let's see if we can drop below it with, of course with the stronger dollar if the dollar continues to accelerate then we might see ethereum eth usd here uh, dr drifting a little bit further south um, my next target could be this in the lowest point of january near the 2160 zone but again let's go slowly on this for the upside uh, pretty straightforward i need to see Mm, where's that trend line? There we go. Uh, for the upside, I need to see at least a break of this downside line taken from the high of the 10th of February. Jumping into a few pairs right now, very quickly, guys. AUD and ZD. So, um, something of a double top here is forming. Uh, again, uh, maybe too early to talk about that. Let me just put this line here on the chart. So, there we go. Beautiful test. This 1.0797 zone. Beautiful test. Uh, now we're drifting back down. Um, if it is a double top, then we need a break of the so called neckline. Well, again, uh, the neckline is. Is roughly around here in between these two levels the 1.0666 and the 1.0675 um, or actually 76 more um, so if we do clear this area I would say then yes we could maybe consider a bit of a, a move to the downside um, but for now um, for now, uh, I'm going to remain on the, a little bit on the neutral side because in a way the pair is seen kind of oscillating around that 21-day EMA. So yeah, if you're looking for this, some downside, then at least wait for a drop below this this area right there. Um, and then we could go for maybe... Um, a move to the um, to the 1.0564 level, and then we'll take it from there. For the upside, of course, a break of this barrier here, 1.0797 is needed. Now, NZD USD haven't picked up picked up on this one for quite a while. As you can see, my arrow has <laughs> is still here somewhere. But I mean, let's recycle it, and uh, basically, let's uh, pick up on this little hurdle right there. Um, this little hurdle right here is, yep, something to keep in mind. And uh, looking at this, um, you can see that somehow it did provide good resistance together with the 200-day EMA as well. Of course, we did get yesterday an overshoot here. Probably a lot of traders got stopped out uh, because a lot of a lot of some a lot of them were jumping in here and you know pushing and kind of jumping in on the buy side of course it, it did present itself with a nice opportunity don't get me wrong however this is the one of those moments where you need to kind of you know keep your 
head head cool and uh, wait for uh, the daily candle to see if we stay above it. Um, if we do stay above it, then there is a bit of a greater chance that you know we could see a further move, uh, let's say, in that direction, in the direction of the breakout. Um, of course, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, it still happens the opposite way. I mean, that's the market we're talking about here. But still, if we're you know we're trying to kind of try to see find some sort of a pattern here some sort of a, a sequence uh, then yes I mean uh, I would this is my idea I mean I I, I stick to that um, and uh, uh, but I, you always need to like I said adjust your uh, stop loss correctly now in terms of the upside um, again like I said this barrier is needed for me I need to see a daily candle staying a body of the daily candle staying above it in order to go for uh, for some higher levels for the upside, oh, for, sorry, for the downside, I would rather wait for a drop below this upside line right here, just to be a little bit more on the safe side. This upside line is taken from the low of the 28th of January. A USD CAD very quickly on this one, beautiful move to the upside. We are knocking on the door of the upper side here of this barrier, this 1.2814. Of course, stronger dollar, although oil is pushing higher. Yes, it's not really working out here well for uh, for the Canadian dollar because the U.S. dollar, its neighboring counterpart, is kind of on the stronger side. So, um, yeah, um, at the moment, I'm I'm leaning a little bit more towards the upside. However, as I can as I can see that 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 barrier right here, this 1.2814, is doing its job and providing good resistance. I need to see a nice good break. Build, uh, above, sorry, above it um, in order to go for some higher levels. Uh, US dollar against the Mexican peso, guys. I mean, I've talked about this one before and you know, about two weeks ago. Um, and uh, well, uh, we were sent somewhere sitting around here and it said, wait for this, you know, to make a better move. And you can see that it, dro it dro drove above all of its EMAs, then settled a little bit and then prepared for another explosion and boom. Um, everything's kind of in line with the, we know with the technical uh, technicals here. So I would say if it if it continues to rally, to be honest, this is it wouldn't be a problem to see maybe a move towards um, you know towards this high here, the highest point of November of 2021, and then that's roughly around that 21. Uh, let me just put this one. I think I've missed the. Uh, let me just grab it very quickly. There we go. 22.15, uh, roughly around there. That's the highest point of November of 2021. So, yep. And in general, I think the highest point of 2021. So, yep. Uh, let's aim for that level for now. Uh, again, like I said, due to stronger dollar, yep, that's a you know uh, helping uh, here, um, you know the U.S. dollar to kind of appreciate against its Mexican counterpart. However, um, in this situation, to be honest, I think uh, temporarily, uh, temporarily Mexico will be the winner in all this situation because I mean it will become a little bit more attractive for you know for the for the for the U.S. for the U.S. to um, to import. Uh, stuff from uh from mexico so so yeah i would say yes we are seeing a strong you know uh, kind of de devaluation against the us dollar however um however the on the other side um mexican exports become a, a bit more attractive for the u.s consumer um and this might if let's say if this is maintained something or somewhere around here then um well i would say the u.s consumer you know right now could be probably you know crossing the border for that uh for that cheaper cheaper fuel uh cheaper goods so yeah um kind of like i said it is it is working well for now for the Mexican economy. Um, jumping into very quickly into GBP USD. Um, so here we finally dropped and there we go. Boom. Yesterday I talked about this 1.3161 level. We stayed below it. And uh, for now, I would say even if we do retrace back up here, I would say yes, we will continue aiming lower. Uh, let me just, uh, there we go. Um, Looking at this picture, um, I'm aiming for that 1.2854 level, to be honest, and uh, yeah, and then we'll take it from there. It's pretty much straightforward here. I would say as long as it stays below this uh, lowest point of December, then yes, I'll continue aiming lower. If it doesn't, then I'll take a bit of a uh, careful approach, and then I'll reevaluate this one again. Euro Aussie. So. I talked about it yesterday, and there we go. Boom. Beautiful reversal, guys. 
beautiful reversal and uh, yes uh, if you manage to capture it somewhere maybe around that 1.45 67 66 level right here congratulations you did well um, yesterday I said that if we do pop above that 1.4860 uh seven zone right here because that was the high yesterday during my video i talked about this when i said that that was the high of, uh, at that moment that was the high of that day uh we popped above it and we stayed above it and uh, now uh, we've uh, the new high for yesterday was around the 1.4887 88 zone 1.4888 there we go um now we're clearing that level and if we do continue to trade above this area above that level well to be honest i am leaning a little bit more for a better correction here to the upside and finally euro usd um so uh continues to slide of course that's obvious logical um the, we've managed to reach this 1.07 uh, sorry 1.0870 zone i've talked about this level and uh yeah uh we're now seeing uh actually the, the pair trading below it it didn't rebound from it and to be honest if if it if it can stay below this 1.0870, my next target is the low of the um, 24th of April of 2020, and that's roughly around that 1.0727. Slightly below that, we do have the lowest point of March of 2020. That's during that was during the pandemic here. Well, the dollar also, you know, uh, kind of moved nicely to the uh, to the upside against all of its major counterparts, and uh, yeah. Um, here for now guys i mean of course you are all probably waiting for that nice correction here to the upside however if it stays below the 1.0870 territory i'm going to continue aiming lower if it climbs back above it maybe there is a bit of hope for a small corrective move higher but i'm not like I said, I'm, not, I'm just being very careful, careful right now. DXY is crying for that 100 level. So, yeah, let's see if we can reach that, guys. So, uh, that was a... Yeah, that was it, guys, for this session. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I really appreciate your time. Again, like I said, this is a recorded session. So, thank you very much for kind of watching it still. I know it's not live, but um, hopefully next week we can go back live. But uh, yeah, guys, uh, thank you very much for your time. Um, I really appreciate it. I, I really appreciate your likes, your views, guys. I really do. So um, have a great trading day. Stay safe. Have your stop loss in place and everything will be fine. So thank you very much and bye-bye.